In 2010, after a series of teen suicides in the Houston area caused by excessive bullying, Holocaust Museum Houston sought to address the problem by creating a comprehensive program. The goal was to make students and teachers more aware of how they treat each other and the effects of their actions. We came to the realization that there are just a myriad of programs about bullying, yet we knew from our own work in schools with children that when you say what we call the B word, the bully word, that kids often roll their eyes. They've been learning about this forever and ever and ever, and yet the problem is still prevalent all around them. So we decided that we needed to find language and ways to discuss the behaviors that were going on beyond bullying. After discovering a book by renowned child psychologist, Dr. Carl Pickhart, the museum found the language they were looking for. In the book, five behaviors are revealed that cover the entire spectrum of what is now called social cruelty. Teasing has to do with prejudice and stereotypes. Exclusion has to do with discrimination. Bullying has to do with harassment. Rumoring has to do with slander. Ganging up has to do with persecution. These are huge issues. One day we just said, oh my gosh, all behaviors count. The museum invited teachers from around Houston to participate in training sessions after the program was tested during a rigorous pilot program. Once I sat through the program and heard the program, I knew it was something for us. This was an exemplary training. There's no, no other way to describe it. I think with the students that we've worked with, we see them increasingly becoming more aware of their choices. I really like it because this lesson is helping us all really connect and think about how bad bullying is and learning more about it so we can prevent it. As students are engaging, they're telling you little secrets about themselves, little insights into what they're experiencing. You start to understand it, what it is that they need and you start helping them get ideas of what they can do for themselves, they now feel empowered to say to themselves, you know what, I'm going to not let it define me and I'm going to define myself instead. The All Behaviors Count program uses a triangle to show the various roles people play in socially cruel situations. There is the victim, the perpetrator, the bystander, and the type of person we're trying to create, the upstander. To become an upstander, we need to start modeling it ourselves. If you hear somebody engaging in taunting, standing up and, and saying you're not going to tolerate it, model it. If you pay attention, there's always someone looking on who may be an upstander. And usually when one person steps up, other people who had it in their hearts and knew that this wasn't right will start to come out of the woodwork. In order to create change within any community, you have to have sustained conversation. It isn't something that happens in the morning or happens on Friday. It happens 24 hours a day. This program provides ways to have those conversations. It has to be an ongoing effort on a regular basis to help kids learn how to treat each other in safe and respectful ways. We're taking an hour a week out of the regular curriculum day to teach social skills. All it takes sometimes is just a simple slideshow in the mornings to reinforce a statement or reinforce a behavior. Anybody in the world can find this program freely available to them on Holocaust Museum Houston's website. Under the Education tab, the very first resource you find is All Behaviors Count. Through the use of popular TV commercials, the All Behaviors Count program showcases how often companies use social cruelty to sell products. The program also uses stories from Holocaust survivors to remind us what happens if we don't put an end to social cruelty. There are a myriad of reasons why the Holocaust Museum is the perfect place for these conversations to take place. We don't just stamp out or check ourselves on social cruelty because it's, you know, a nice thing to do. We do it because history has taught us, our remembrance has taught us, that when we don't do it, before you know it, we would allow cruelty to become cancerous. Big changes in behavior start with small changes. And I think that this program could not have a better home than here at Holocaust Museum Houston 
because we care about history. We care about how human beings do act to others. Having this context for understanding will bring more purpose to why we are so adamant about having students that understand and live into the idea that all behaviors count. Please visit hmh.org to learn more about the All Behaviors Count program.